Continuing on, we're going to go ahead now and look more in depth at the camera parameters. The very first thing that we need to be reminded of is that the camera parameters are partially controlled by the scenes window. So let's go ahead and launch the scenes window. And you can see here that we have control over a number of aspects in the scene, but the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this to front shot. And then just click off like so, and you can see that it's renamed there. Now we can change any of the things that we want to be contained within this particular scene in terms of it remembering stuff by simply checking things off or checking things on. I think that's going to be fine for right now. I just wanted to show you where we would make those changes. Now let's go ahead and launch the Maxwell Scene Manager. So the Maxwell Scene Manager also has a cameras tab and this camera tab is going to tell you which scene we're currently in. So right now we're in front shot. If I switch to scene two, you'll see the name changes to scene two. So any changes that we make are only going to affect that particular tab. So we have a number of things that we need to be concerned about here. The very first is output resolution. Now in Maxwell Studio, things work a little bit differently. And if you're used to the way things work in Maxwell Studio, it might throw you a little bit in terms of how this works. But this is very much, again, part of that WYSIWYG kind of concept. And to that end, basically what Jeremy has done is he set up the entire display of the viewport here to be exactly what it is that we are going to get in our render. This is sort of independent of what we would think of as the film back size in Maxwell. Now, that said, what I usually like to do is I usually like to go to camera, field of view, and just set my field of view for 46 degrees. That's just something that I do because I think that that's going to give me a better look. And because we are sort of independent of our film back and some of the other camera settings here in the Maxwell plugin, we're going to go ahead and take advantage of that and just right off the bat set everything to our field of view of 46. So as I said, right now we're set to viewport and you can see that. Now, if I wanted to change that so that I can have a custom size, what I need to do here is I need to change from viewport to custom. And now what I can do is I can click on this little show aspect ratio in viewport. And when I do that and I change this guy from locked to unlocked, I can begin to make modifications. And when I make those modifications, what happens is we get these gray bars that are going to show us what's actually going to render. Everything outside of those gray bars will not render. And the only thing that's going to render is what's being shown normally in our SketchUp viewport. So that can be a very useful thing in terms of setting up a custom resolution. Now you can also, if you choose to, simply go and type in manually whatever size it is that you want. So let's say I know that I want 400 by 800 pixels. I know that once I have that 400 by 800 pixels, I'm just going to click here in an empty spot and then lock that. Now that I have that locked, I know that this is always going to stay the same and I don't need to worry about that. Now, again, just to remind you, if we click on scene two, even though we're seeing that as we're going through the rotation, as soon as we get there, it goes away because in scene two, those settings don't exist. So that's important to know. There we go. We're back. Now, the other thing that you really got to wrap your brain around here in terms of the cameras tab is our exposure is pretty much driven by our EV value. And the EV value is something that you're going to find in the back of the SketchUp manual. It's really, really important that you read that SketchUp to Maxwell manual because there's this huge list of EV. EV stands for exposure value. And there's different EVs for different lighting scenarios. So for instance, I know that for most of this demo, we're going to be working in an indoors lighting scenario. So I'm going to set it for something really low, like say six. It could go as high as eight, depends on what you want. And I'm just going to click off here in this empty spot to set that up. Now what happens is when I do that, the shutter speed, the ISO, they all adjust to whatever the EV is demanding. Now, if I turn off the lock exposure, you notice that the EV is grayed out and now I can change these independently. So if you're more comfortable changing these independently, if you have a traditional camera background, then you may like that. Personally, I think the EV is the way to go, and that would be my recommendation for you. Now, underneath that, we have the show advanced view. We have our diaphragm. We can choose circular or polygonal. Now, the only thing that I would say about the polygonal that might recommend it over the circular is it does render slightly faster. 
The rotary disc shutter, this would be useful for animation, but since we don't have any animation support in Maxwell from SketchUp, there's really no point in worrying about this. The Z-clip planes, we don't really have a visual representation of this in SketchUp. You have to go to Studio to see it, so it really isn't all that important to see. And finally, shift lens. And shift lens, again, is not something that we have a visual representation of in SketchUp, so we don't really need to worry about that. And by and large, this is reproduced, by the way, the shift lens effect is reproduced by going to camera and setting it to two-point perspective. And when you do that, you are now in something that is very much like a shift lens because that's what shift lens does. It allows you to go into something that's basically a two-point perspective and then do whatever you need to do in terms of positioning the camera to get the composition you want in case you're looking for something that looks like an illustration, a traditional architectural type illustration. So again, this is all set up the way we want. Now, you know, if I go up here and I go to my scenes tab and I just hit refresh, that's going to lock all that information in to that scene so that nothing that I do when I change won't change. So for instance, I go to scene two, everything changes back to a normal view. I go back and I keep my 2D camera perspective and everything's good. So that's just something that you want to do periodically when you're working with your cameras. Finally, the thing that you want to be aware of is where is your focal depth? Where is the point that you're actually focusing on? So let's say I want to focus here. I'm going to click on that little FD and I'm going to click right here. And once I've done that, now it's focusing my camera to that spot. Now, if I want to determine my far and near planes in terms of how blurry is my background going to be or how in focus is everything going to be, I can set that up by clicking at two points. So I'm going to click here for my first point. And I'm going to click this back wall here from my second point. And that way I know that everything that's in my scene is going to be in focus. Now let's say for whatever reason that you only want, say, the front cup to be in focus. So what we might do is we might click here for one and then maybe click here for the other. And what that'll do is it'll give us a very narrow field of depth. Now, again, you can't see that in SketchUp but it will show up in the Maxwell render. And when we do a render, you'll see what I'm talking about. But those are basically your camera parameters in a nutshell. And again, a lot of those are very closely tied to the Maxwell main features. So if you are familiar with the way cameras work in studio, then a lot of this will make sense to you. And I highly recommend that you read the manual or watch my training videos on Maxwell Studio because it will help you immensely at understanding when and where you need to go to studio to achieve a particular effect.